Hey guys, uh, one of the more frequent questions I've been getting lately is uh, about the 6mm SLR. Uh, you know, they want to know what cartridge it's based on and uh, specs on it, what kind of velocity we're getting, everything like that. Um, this cartridge here on the left, that is a 6mm SLR. This cartridge is a 243 Winchester. Now these are basically the same pieces of brass. The uh, SLR has been formed from 243 brass. I've turned the neck on this. Quit using Winchester brass. Uh, it's just garbage. But uh, as you can see, we just basically all we're doing is knocking the shoulder back to 30 degrees, lengthening the neck. There's no fire forming involved with this cartridge. I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions with it. Uh, you, you form the brass, you load it up, and it's ready to go. Um, you know, if you like the neck size, then obviously you do need to run it through once to fire form it to your chamber. But uh, I've full length size everything just so it'll feed off a magazine easier. Um, you know, like I said, the, the Winchester brass, I uh, haven't been having much luck with it. I'm really kind of struggling with accuracy on this. So we recently switched to this uh, Alpha Munitions. It's 260 brass. Uh, we neck it down, form the shoulder all in one step. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. Very simple process. Uh, a lot more consistent brass. It is a little thicker, so you do have to reduce your charges a little bit. Uh, it, I tried running the uh, exact same load that I was running in the Winchester brass, and I didn't blow any primers, but I was right on the ragged edge of pressure. So uh, you definitely want to uh, start your load work up over again if you're switching. Um, we are using Reloader 26. Uh, somewhere around 40, 43 to 44 grains seems to be a pretty good starting point. Um, but we'll get more into that on later videos with this. But right now I'm going to show you how to form this. Okay, uh, to start this process, like I said, it's a very simple process. Uh, you're going to want a chamfer and deburring tool. Brush to lubricate your necks. And I'm using Imperial Sizing Dye Wax. Uh, had the best results with this. I mean, Hornady One Shot, I know a lot of people use that. Uh, personally, not a fan, but yeah, I mean, it works. So, And then, of course, your brass. Like I said, we will be necking this down and forming the shoulder all in one step. Very simple. Uh, new brass. Always go ahead and deburr them, chamfer them. Uh, usually these don't have too bad of burrs on them, but there's enough there that when you go to see the bullet, you're, you're going to peel some copper off of your bullet. So uh, go ahead and do it. Just dip my finger. You want to use this very lightly. You build up too much uh, lube, you'll crush your shoulder, leave little divots. Not a huge issue. It'll fire form out, but then I get a little on there and kind of run that around. Using a wooden sizing die for 6SLR. You can also use 6XC dies. I think you have to back them off for like a hundred thousandths higher. Uh, I just got the SLR dies because I don't have a 6XC. And of course we're using our Forster coax press. Just run it down through there nice and slow. Don't force it. I've only done 20 of these so far, but I haven't crushed any necks yet. Any shoulders. And there you go. Beautifully formed 6SLR. Uh, now I'm running a 275 neck in my rifle, which is standard by uh, Robert Whitley's design. So uh, there's no need to trim or uh, turn the necks, rather. Um, and I'll measure the brass just to make sure it's within length specs, but every piece I've done so far has been. We'll, uh, we'll follow this up with some actual load development and uh, 
kind of show you what kind of speeds we're getting out of our 22 inch SLR and we've got a new reamer on order uh, got a little bit shorter freeboard as we are loading these extremely long uh, I'm about out of magazine space I'm still not even close to my rifling so uh, this here our 110 grain bullet that we're shooting phenomenal bullet if you have the twist rate for it the uh, it doesn't seem to like to jump very much to the rifling so I want to uh, shorten that free bore up a little bit so I can chase my lands out a little little bit longer we don't have to rebarrel every thousand rounds or chase the chamber or uh, set the shoulder back and all that shut set the chamber back and one question I'm sure it'll get asked because it always does is uh, why not just use a little Pua? Uh, 243 brass and simple answer for that is the shoulder on Lapua is extremely thick and as you can see from this long neck we're actually shoving some of the shoulder brass up to form the neck now alpha seems to work out pretty well I haven't really uh, haven't really fire formed any of this and then ran it back through the sizing die but with Lapua with the thick shoulder you'll actually get a gigantic donut right there at the base so if you're seeing bullets you know very deep at all it'll cause problems and I mean it, it just it just looks nasty uh, now I have known a couple guys that were using uh, 308 Lapua brass and having the larger neck you know obviously there's not as much neck material shoulder material I should say and uh, so when they form it basically all they're doing is just collapsing the shoulder to 30 degrees and it works out but then you run into very very thick necks so you have to turn the necks uh, with the now I haven't tried any Lapua 260 brass uh, the alpha munitions brass in my opinion is just as good as Lapua so that's why we're running that I also wanted the small rifle primer they usually get a lot better uh, extreme spreads and standard deviations with a small primer, uh, tend to lose a little velocity, but not enough to really matter.